Hello and welcome to the video. As you can probably tell from the intro, today we're looking at some classical inspired sculptures with a bit of a Cthulhu twist. Now this originally came about from a visit to the Victorian Albert Museum in London and I'd been to this years ago when I was young but I don't think I really remembered. And going again more recently I was amazed by the amount of statues on show in the museum. I don't know if there are any others like this in London. I'm sure there are some but um, I'd never seen quite so many sculptures in one place. And I got quite inspired to do something along these lines. As you probably know from previous videos, I have quite a thing for statues. Um, obviously I make my own, but I also collect them. Maybe there's a bit of a fine line between a statue and an action figure, but nevertheless, these things have all been sculpted by someone and produced, you know. And it does strike me that someone can create a six foot tall marble statue, and that's considered art, but someone creates a six centimeter tall statue in plastic, and that's considered to be for nerds. You know, it's a bit of a weird way in the way we receive these sort of things. I mean, ultimately someone sculpted it and designed it, whether that be with a hammer and chisel on marble or in the computer or via clay uh, in the way that I do. So, you know, the way these things are sort of received or considered to be art or not is, is a little bit strange. Nevertheless, they all come from the same root source. And being in the museum surrounded by so many impressive statues really made me want to uh, do something in a similar style. And obviously I want to give it a bit of a uh, horror twist. And so um, I decided to do something like this, but with a sort of a Cthulhu type um, aesthetic to it. Something that I wanted to specifically call out about the museum is the cast courts. And what these are are plaster casts of statues and architecture from around the world that the Victorians made and brought back to the UK. Now it's quite impressive that they actually managed to do this on such a scale, particularly at the time that they didn't have silicon rubber. So for quite a while I was really puzzled as to how they could get such impressive casts without having modern materials to actually work with. Um, having read a bit about it in some of the displays, it seems they use some form of a tree rubber um, to, to make these but they're absolutely amazing and the sheer scale of these things is ridiculous I mean, you can see here that there's a uh, full-size cast of Michelangelo's David and this thing is huge I hadn't realized quite how big this thing actually is it's like about 20 feet tall or something and similarly they've also got this cast of Trajan's column um, from, from Italy and this in two pieces because it's so huge but the fact that they were able to actually cast these things up at this scale is, is incredible so yeah very impressive stuff and very inspiring so I spent ages in the museum just going around taking photos of absolutely everything so that I had plenty of reference uh, to use when I came back to make my own sculptures. Now as well as the sculpture that I showed in the intro I've also uh, been working on several others along similar lines this one is inspired by a statue called Samson of the Philistines, which I saw in the museum. And I was quite impressed with the way the sort of bodies were sort of intertwined together. And obviously these things were generally carved out of one block of marble, which is the case here, I think. And for this one, I wanted to do something similar. I don't know if I'm going to mold these, but I want to sort of keep that possibility open. So what I was trying to do was to have the body sort of intertwined to such an extent that they were sort of largely one shape. That way if I do want to mould it, the mould's not going to be too complicated. And I sort of filled in voids by putting uh, fabric, you know, clothing sort of falling down around the sculpture. That way there weren't too many voids uh, that could prove complicated uh, for mould making. So this one isn't fully finished, uh, but as you can see it's in a fairly advanced state. Something that I also wanted to try again, which is an idea that I originally attempted about 20 years ago. So here's my original piece. And if you're familiar, this is based on Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. Uh, I've always really liked that diagram, and so I thought it, was, it would always be cool to include that in a sculpture. So this original version is made in plasticine, and this is about as far as I got with it. But I wanted to try that again. So for this one, I've used a Lazy Susan, which is one of those turntables you can buy. And I've just cut the inner ring away and the outer ring was exactly the shape that I needed so I've sort of built the armature into the ring and as you can see I've sculpted the figure within. Now this is also quite handy because if I do decide to, to mould this I've already got some channels in the mould to allow the resin to flow through the mould in the form of this big ring so, so that's quite handy from a sort of a technical point of view but I think this looks quite cool and it's quite large actually it's got a bit of a scale to it and so it's got a bit of presence which is quite nice. Now I've got fairly far through this but I want to add additional bits to it like some sort of machinery on the ring make it look like some sort of a mechanical device that's holding the figure in place so fair bit to do on this one as well but again quite quite pleased with that. 
So this is the sculpture that I'm going to be focusing on for this video. And this one began in the same way as many others. Um, so I'm making a armature out of car brake line. So that's just some thin copper pipe. And it's really useful because you can solder it together very easily and shape it very easily. So it's good stuff to, uh, to use uh, for armatures. So I'm just soldering some pieces together and then bending them into the correct form uh, to give me the pose I need. Now I want this figure to have sort of a degree of flow to it, as though perhaps there was some fabric blowing the wind and uh, curving around it. So to that end I'm sort of trying to um, find a pose which would accentuate that motion. And what I'm doing is just blocking out the figure first before I attach it to a base. I just want to make sure that this actually looks correct before I go sort of finalising stuff uh, by attaching it. Now as it turned out, what actually happened was um, I had the figure sort of leaning a little bit too far to, to the right. So what I actually ended up doing was coming back and modifying the base to sort of tilt it back the other way. So that was quite a handy way of sort of adjusting the sculpture without actually messing with the sculpture itself. Now sculptures will often have sort of fabric floating around them sometimes in these sorts of sculptures but I'm going to be using tentacles uh, for my one just to sort of keep with my Cthulhu aesthetic. I'm also going to be including some of the techniques that I developed for my previous Cthulhu sculptures and so for that end I'm using this soldering iron with the uh, heating station and I found this really useful just for sort of general use actually you know if you want to sort of join two blobs of monster clay together you can just melt the surface of both and then push them together obviously it's also useful for detailing as well and so I'll be coming back and using it for that purpose a little bit later on now for this uh, tentacle, the top section actually was getting a little bit loose, so I decided to include an armature for that, and I've done that just by attaching it to the arms of the existing armature. I wasn't quite sure what to do with it so for the minute I'm putting in a placeholder here just with some tentacles but I'm not quite sure where I want to go with it so um, I'll, I'll sort of leave that for the time being and revisit in a little bit. This rake tool I made out of a serrated blade from a bandsaw and I just put that into a brass tube which I've flattened. It's quite a serrated tool so it really roughs the clay up um, quite a lot but I found that's really useful for trying to refine the shapes. Now I've started putting in some sort of robes that will be covering the figure and after a while I actually abandoned these. The reason being is a lot of the reference pictures I'm looking at of, of the statues from the VNA, most of them are naked, you know what I mean? And so although I try and sort of shy away from including nudity in my sculptures, I think it's a little bit kind of been done to death, you know? I think if you do want to evoke that sort of classical sculpture look, then generally speaking they're naked. So it was keeping in theme to do it. So in the end I did actually abandon the robes that I'm putting in here. Now I wanted to have another tentacle which would sort of do the uh, counter flow around the sculpture and it, but if I am going to mould this then this can't be a uh, fixed item it needs to be able to come away so what I've done is to make a little socket out of acrylic plastic here so that thing can then be taken away if I need to so I'm just gluing that onto the base and then hiding it uh, beneath some monster clay. So for the head I eventually decided to have some human features here, I've always liked faces which don't have any eyes, so what I decided to do is have some human features on the lower half of the face but then have that turn into a sort of a monstrous um, creature further up. 
So I'm just building that up and adding some tentacle detail. And I'm coming in with a solder guide to start melting in some organic looking detail into that. Because it melts the clay, you get a nice soft sort of finish to it, which um, is probably quite a little bit more difficult to replicate with sculpting tools. So I found this thing really, really useful. For a time I was also thinking there could be some sort of markings in the creature's flesh. I'm not quite sure what these are, whether they're scars or just sort of a, you know, creature uh, decent of some sort. Um, so that was there for a little bit, but ultimately I decided not to go in that direction. Now what I'm doing here is coming back and further refining the musculature of the sculpture. I need to mention uh, Eric Arneson, or maybe Eric Arneson, who you can see here. I found this guy on Facebook, and he's a sculptor from the Florence Academy of Art, and as you can see, the stuff he's done is just absolutely incredible. And it's got that sort of classical look to it, where the muscles are sort of accentuated, perhaps a little bit more than they are in reality. So although, although all this stuff is anatomically correct, it's just that little bit more accentuated. Um, so I think you'd be hard-pressed to find a human that actually looks like this, um, but it does look really, really cool, you know, and obviously there's a huge degree of um, talent um, going into this to make this look look um, real and so um, I found a lot of his stuff uh, very inspirational for sort of doing this sort of thing so I'm trying to just sort of accentuate the uh, the musculature here in a similar way to try and to kind of evoke that sort of classical sculpture look. Right, so there we go. Um, so I'm quite pleased I actually finished the sculpture. Uh, obviously I've got a few others that I need to come back to, but I'm quite pleased with the way this one came out. So I think that's it for the time being. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.